I have another take two with Therese today for Alter New and today I'm going to be using this creativity kit which is called Sweet Story of Us. So these kits come with an inspiration guide so when you get your products you can actually just jump straight into it and make some cards. All the instructions are there and I'm just going to quickly walk you through what's included. So you get six mini cubes of ink, the rock collection enamel dots, my favorite ones, and then two sets of stamps and coordinating dies. So one of my favorites, you would have seen me use this one over and over, it's the Sweet Friend set and also the one of the this one's called Story of Us but it's one of those kind of watercolory flower images and some beautiful sentiments in that stamp set as well. It kind of made me feel like I wanted to do some watercoloring today and some really simple stuff and I thought it'd be fun to watercolor with the Alter New inks. I'm stamping out now this is the frame image from Sweet Friend and I'm using, it's this is the jet black ink. So the kit includes the jet black ink which is not the permanent black. It's a lovely dark black that um, stamps beautifully but it's not compatible with watercoloring. So how I got around that was I actually stamped over the top of my image using my Misty and some embossing ink and I'm going to be using the crystal clear embossing powder to stamp directly over my image and then heat set that. Now this is a good cheaty way to watercolor and it's it actually makes watercoloring even easier because the heat embossed image gives you a well that the watercolor is going to sit in so you don't have to get so stressed about colors mixing. Right so I've Actually, I've actually used my full size ink pads because <laughs> they were right beside me and I couldn't be bothered opening the package. Is that bad? That's bad. Anyway, but I've actually just used the ink pads and stamped them onto the medium size palette. Alton, you have a medium and a large palette. I tend to use the medium one probably because I'm filming <laughs> and it fits better in the film area, but the large one would probably be handier to use because you've got more space for mixing color and it's an A4 size so it's not massive anyway. So I've actually stamped the ink pads onto the palette and I'm using my aqua like a water brush from Alta New. This is the middle sized one and literally just picking up the color and dropping it into the wells that the heat embossing has called, created on my image. And I'm not even waiting for it to dry before I'm adding my second color for the leaves. I am mixing my colors while they're still wet so I put my lighter color down first and then I'm picking up the darker color and dropping it in and I'm trying not to be too fussy. I'm going to set this aside to dry because when I've got it heat embossed I don't want to reheat the embossing because it will make the embossing powder go a bit weird so it's easier just to um, let it air dry. So I don't want to waste this ink because why would I you know it's like such a waste. <laughs> so I've actually cut two background panels here and I didn't like this one at first. I thought it looked a bit weird. I am just picking up color and dropping it on. I'm picking some water up out of a well. I'm also squishing my water brush to add more water and um, I know that it's going to dry a little bit lighter and this is on Bristol Smooth cardstock and I also colored my frame on the Bristol Smooth and then what I did was come back in and added some flicks of ink and I, and I really liked the look of the background after I added the flicks. My second panel was just flicks. I didn't actually do any washy washy look. <laughs> Alright so this frame has dried now. Now I want to die cut my frame and the coordinating die is a solid die. So I've cut it out of a piece of scrap cardstock and lined it up over top of my image now that it's dry and then I can just adhere my two pieces of cardstock together and adhere my die in place before I run it through my die cutting machine. And this is a fabulous die. It actually cuts 
right up to the very edge of the image. There's no white border at all. I've die cut it again out of some fun foam and just use my matte medium to hold that in place while I line up my die over top and that way I know the foam's not going to lose shape and set that aside to dry. Now here, look at me, I'm being such a cheapskate. <laughs> I wanted a little border around the edge of my panel and I also wanted to add a sentiment. So I've white heat embossed the sweet friend sentiment and then I actually cut the center out of my border that's going to go my, my, my layering border that's going to be behind my panel. No one's ever going to know but I got to get a sentiment and a piece of scrap paper cardstock <laughs> out of there. I've got the XOXO out of the same stamp set and I'm just stamping that in black on my spattered background and I did have to stamp that out a couple of times because this is on the Bristol Smooth and it's also got that flicky flicky background that I created. And I simply just pop that up on the front of my top fold card with some fun foam behind it to give it a bit more dimension. And with the frame I also adhered that with the matte medium and then I just used some foam squares to pop up my sweet friend sentiment. Which is kind of a clean and simple but busy card for me really. I did have to add the enamel dots. <laughs> and I like to do them in kind of a triangle and focus them around a sentiment, often tucking them in as well. I love odd numbers, so three works for me. And if you look at that, I kind of always give myself a bit of a visual triangle rather than moving around too much. If I work in triangles, I seem to get them placed much easier. So now I'm going to stamp out a couple of the flowers from the Story of Us stamp set. And this is a really easy stamp set to line up. I've used the three blues and on the very last layer, I actually came in with the jet black and added that over top. So I stamped these out twice. I wanted two flowers on my card and I did use the coordinating die to cut them out as well. I also stamped some leaves with the greens that came in the creativity kit as well. And then white heat embossed one of the sentiments. See, look at that gorgeous font that's in this stamp set. And some really nice sentiments in it too. And I just did that on some black cardstock. Not the navy. I used navy in the previous card. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. Something different, I know. Alright, so I've added the panel that I created before to the front of a top fold card, just using lots of adhesive because it's a watercolour card stock and, well it's not, it's Bristol Smooth, but it's a heavier card stock and it didn't warp very much, but I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going anywhere. So I like to add lots of adhesive and also lots of pop dots so that my images and my sentiments don't sag because that would make me sad. So Alton you have a bunch of creativity kits. They are all as inspiring as this one. You can make heaps and heaps of different cards. There's just such a good way if you lack inspiration to be able to grab out a kit that's actually put together to coordinate really well it does make life so easy and I found limiting myself to just two cards was really difficult here today it was just the options are endless and the colors are so pretty <laughs> I think they went really well together so if you like this video please like it and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and come back again real soon for some more inspiration. So till next time, bye.